who said this yesterday because they've been sick this week. Praise God, I'm here. I'm so glad to be here. Amen. 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 Get a hymn book. If you use that hymn book, turn to 153. Let's all stay in this city. <laughs>
Just keep it. I don't care which time. Just keep it. <laughs> All right, we're not going into that. Nonetheless, <laughs> right. hey, listen, I am way off today, okay? In just a minute, we're not going to smile a while like we normally do. We will smile a while with the song. We'll sing it. When we raise our hand, we'll turn around and just shake a few hands, maybe, and you then get out your, your clean stuff and wash your hands real quick if you want, or just fist bump or elbow bump or not at somebody today. If that's what you want to do, that would be perfect. Fine. I am not leaving, but I'm going next door. I left my microphone next door, all right? I went to turn it on, and it wasn't on my hip. I couldn't find it on my other hip. And uh, then I realized it's sitting on my desk, still next door. And so I'm a little off the okay. place today. Uh, we will not have PowerPoint for the sermon because I was trying to be really, uh, really effective. And, and I got ahead and I'm doing this series. And, and I started working on the last, the last sermon of the series. And that's when I made the PowerPoint up. And that's when I studied this morning, thinking that's what I was preaching. I said, wait a minute, I missed one somewhere. And, uh, Daylight savings time. <laughs> daylight. And so I'm way off today, so maybe I don't like daylight savings time. Uh, but but uh, uh, hopefully I'll have a sermon for you, uh, and, uh, and you'll be able to hear it uh, in a few moments. But uh, uh, we'll not smile a while as we normally do. At least, at least it's all the way back there in the back. All right? If a couple of you ladies would help me out. And just go over and lay hands on Lisa, if you would, for just a minute. All right? Well, I can bring her all the way up front if we need to. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a few more ladies will come. But come on up. Come, come on a little close. About halfway anyways. And then the gals can meet you there. Brandon wants to join in as well. That's his mom. <laughs> Lisa's having surgery on Thursday. Um, I am a hernia surgery. I've never heard of that being done. And uh, I think she's been asking around and she hasn't found anybody yet, I don't think, that's had it done. But we want to pray for her uh, as she was going through this surgery. Pray for, for Brandon and pray for uh, Brittany and for Craig as well as uh, she goes through this process uh, this week. And so let's pause a moment for intercessory prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you for another day. I right now want to lift our sister Lisa up to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we know that laying on the hands is, is not any special power or, or anything, but as these ladies uh, connect with her, if your spirit bears witness with their spirit, our spirit, and, and together, just come together in strength and in courage. I pray for a peace that passeth all understanding. Yeah. I pray for comfort. I pray for uh, the surgery. We pray for the surgeon. Pray for the nurses and the techs and all that will be involved in taking care of her and her stay in the hospital. And Father, we pray for a speedy recovery. I ask your blessing now on Lisa, our family, be with them in a mighty way. I pray, Father, for the many others who are here today, many uh, who aren't here because of the crud that is going around uh, in our neighborhoods and our schools and, and, uh, and, and our families. Lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. I pray for Tom and Sharon uh, 
this morning, Father, lift them up. Just pray comfort and peace and strength in this time of need for Mrs. Laycox. I'm grateful, Father, and we praise you that Brother Ray is sitting here on the front row with us today. Yeah. And many others, Father, have been sick, and some are back, and some are still out. We just lift them to you in the name of Jesus. But, Father, even more importantly, we pray for that one that is lost, yeah. that is without Christ, yeah. that has no hope at this present time. They would come to know the free part of their sin. Jesus, as he's lifted up, we draw. You know, no man can be saved unless the Holy Spirit draws him, unless Jesus calls. Yeah. So as he calls, may they respond. Help us put feet on our prayers. Help us to do what we need to do. What you have asked us to do is in response to our request. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this time we're going to Stand a mile of wild. Again, we'll, uh, we'll just kind of stay close to home. And uh, if there's someone special, you got to go shake your hand or hug your neck. I'm not going to stop. All right? Are you going to announce that? Oh, I've got one more announcement. I am so sorry. Right in front of them. <laughs> you can have an announcement. No. Is your announcement? <laughs> All right. In 2020, a service project is asked to relieve mud out of buckets. Uh, the challenge is for the churches to bring uh, buckets, and there's a list of things that you can bring in to put in the buckets, and the ladies have a spring retreat in April. April, April that they will take those buckets filled with supplies, and uh, it'll be used to help in disaster relief, such as in Nashville right now, and it was used here in our own area uh, back uh, Memorial Day. But uh, it's it's but it's self-explanatory. Um, it's back there. You pick one up. Uh, if it's in front of your face, I don't know how you'll miss it. All right. Sometimes we do though, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you pick that up. If you don't want to fill the bucket, you can buy gift cards. You can buy gift cards from Lowe's and somewhere else. They suggest. But I don't remember where. Lowe's or Walmart gift cards, and they they'll be just as handy to go fill the buckets on on uh, how they have. So you now know. If you don't do it, it's not my fault. Let's all stand. Oh, you got it. And then uh, kids, oh, pull over a kids connection. <laughs> Beautiful from the back. Thank I noticed you. the last Sunday. Thank you.
have been set on. Oh, my Lord, it's that. Oh, my worship. Thank you, God, for that privilege of this way of worship. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll bless the giver and always the gift. But in the precious name of Jesus, amen. amen. <laughs>
Bibles would like to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 and 39. We're looking at today. I apologize. There's nothing on the screen. Uh, we could put some stuff up there, but it would be for the next sermon. And I want to throw you off and confuse me completely. Uh, it's weird. I'm not sure what's exactly going on. Uh, but uh, yesterday I did a funeral at 5 o'clock and I came over here to the church or to the office where I keep my suits and uh, changed my clothes and looked over my little notes I had in a little book that I used for my funerals. And, uh, Set the book on the tape desk and uh, got up and left. Showed up at the uh, Kinder Funeral Home, was talking for a few minutes, and I reached around and didn't have my book and my Bible and my notes. And went out to the car, thinking that's where they were, and they, they went in the car. So I come back in and asked uh, John, who was working at yesterday last night, uh, you give me a copy of the obituary, a nice big bold font. Because <laughs> that little card they put in, even, even with the glasses weren't, uh, I didn't forget those. It's amazing. I remember the glasses. <laughs> didn't have anything to look at, so I didn't need the glasses. <laughs> he printed that off for me. And uh, I told him, I said, well, I guess I'll try to use my phone as my Bible. That's what the young hip preachers do, use electronic Bibles. Uh, I realized real quick I was a young boy hip. And, uh, the phone is just, just not, I can't use that. I need, I need a Bible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't need a piece of electronic cigarette. I don't say it's wrong. Perfectly fine. You can do it. I just can't do it. And uh, praise God, he got me through the funeral. I don't think they were uh, known any better than I didn't have anything in front of me. And, uh, I didn't wing it. Uh, God bless me with the remembrance of what I had planned to say, and unfortunately, almost every single verse I knew by heart at that point that I was going to use, and I jotted down real quick underneath the obituary kind of reporter so I wouldn't get confused, you know, and get way out of whack. And, uh, and then I walked in this morning, I sat down early, and I studied, and I looked over my notes for this morning, and I came over for prayer during Sunday school, and I went back over to kind of get everything in my head, and I looked, and I thought, I should be on the danger of despising. And I've got ahead. Uh, I really felt good about myself. I've gotten ahead in my sermons and was working ahead, and looking forward to Bible school here pretty soon. Uh, Bible school is always, I enjoy it. It's a great challenge. It's always familiar stories, but it's the twist that they try to put on it and uh, try to preach those lessons. Uh, and so I thought, man, I'm going to be ahead of the game. I'm getting working on Easter here pretty soon. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I walked in, I had 15 minutes of before I walked over here, and I realized I got the wrong sermon. <laughs> and I asked God if I could go ahead and preach it out of order, and he didn't say yes. <laughs> and uh, so, man, here we go. Okay, so hold on. Let's hope it comes out. Uh, and uh, we'll see uh, that's what God can do uh, in a little bit of time. Now, you know, we've been looking at a series in the book of Hebrews about warning signs for signs of danger. There are six warning signs given to us. The danger of drifting, the danger of doubting, the danger of dull hearing, the danger of departing, the danger of despising. And I read this one this morning, the danger of denying. I said, wait a minute, I am out of order somewhere. And so I realized we are on the danger of despising. Now remember, we need to approach the book of Hebrews as a letter written to believers who are in danger of lapsing into a carnal state of spiritual immaturity because of a wrong attitude toward the Word of God. Believers start their backward journey first by drifting from the Word. Remember that drifting is subtle. It's so subtle that we don't even realize sometimes it's happening to us. It's as, as we have said now, if you go up into the beach, or many, many of you have, and you go and you lay all your stuff out, and you go out there and you play in the water, and before you know it, you come walking straight out, and you can't find your stuff. And you start looking, and you realize you have drifted far away from home base. And that's how it is often. We begin to slowly drift from the Word of God. And then we begin to doubt the Word of God. And as a result, 
There's a doll of carry. We, 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 we don't even hear him anymore. And if we do hear the word of God, we don't apply it to our lives. We become hearers and not doers of the word. And then we begin to depart from the word of God. We drift, we doubt, we become dull of hearing. And next thing you know, we're not even picking up the Bible and reading it. We might not even become the church to pick it up once a week and dust it off. And bring it to depart from the word of God. And then we come to this place that we begin to despise the word of God. Can you imagine believers despising the word of God? In verse 26 of chapter 2, For if we sin willfully, right after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for a of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment suppose ye? Should he be through work worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Mm -hmm. Call for remembrance the former days, in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great light of affliction, partly which ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and part of which ye became companions of them that were so used. For you had compassion of me in the bonds, and took joyfully the spoils of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have not of patience that at that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. God, ye might receive the promise for a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back. For them that believe to the saving of the soul. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, as we look into your word and we open up a passage that just as we read it on the surface seems so difficult, or at least to me. I pray that we look this morning that you show us what you have for us. As the body of Christ, as First Baptist Church of the Union, but also what you have for us as individuals. May we, as Samuel was instructed to cry out, Lord, thy servant hears. May we hear what the Spirit has to say. Speak now through your word. What should we do when we see a warning sign? We should pay close attention to it, right? Mm -hmm. That is why God gave us these warning signs. It is his desire that we heed them. So why did he give us the warning sign of the danger of the spies? I want to share three thoughts with you this morning. But this sign, the danger of the spies. He is warning us because there is the possibility of falling into an attitude of despising. Now remember, it's a progression. We start drifting from the Word of God. We start doubting the Word of God. We begin to become dull of hearing towards the Word of God. And then we begin to despise the Word of God. We begin to despise it as we depart away further and further from it. So God is warning us because there is a possibility of falling into this attitude of despising. So what is despising? 
Well, verse 26, I think, gives us a clear definition of what he's talking about when he says that we are despising the word of God. Verse 26 says, for if we sin willfully, if we sin willfully, that is a willing disobedience. That is an open disrespect to what the word of God says. Says. Now, this is not even any comparison, but when I was in Bible college, it was a requirement that we wear a necktie. We didn't have to wear a suit and tie, but we had to wear a necktie. We had to wear dress pants, a dress shirt, and a tie. And there would be some fellows, now I would never do this. I just couldn't, I couldn't break myself from doing it. As simple as this rule was, and as, as little as, I mean, it was enforced, but not really. They would just warn you, if you showed up one day without a tie, you didn't want to show up the next day without your tie. But the first day they'd go ahead and leave you in class and it wasn't that strict of, a, of an enforcement. Most people was abiding by it, but, but sometimes some would just want to try and see what they could get by with. And so they would show up with an open collar. And we would call that open rebellion. Never mind. <laughs> I guess he had to be there. <laughs> they would, they would, they would open. And that's what he willingly sinned Willfully is a willing disobedience. It's an open disrespect for the word of God. God says something, and then we come to despise that. We are sinned willfully. We are sinning with this willful disobedience, this open disrespect for the word of God. Now, the evidence of this despising is willful sin. If we are falling into a category where we are sinning openly, where we know, I mean, we actually know most times when we come to the crossroad what is right and what is wrong. We know what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And I don't want to get caught up in the thinking that Christianity is a performance-based religion. It is not. Every other religion in the world is performance-based. Every other religion in the world is trying to please the deity of that religion, trying to do the right thing. Make sure you don't do the wrong thing. And sometimes in Christianity, we get so legalistic that the world sees it as a performance based religion. It's not. Jesus died for our sins, right. period. Right. We can't do anything to appease God. Right. He already is pleased with us because we are his creation. He looked at us in creation and he said, and in all of creation, he, he saw it and, and he said, it is good. It is good. Now, sin interrupted that. And so Jesus came to die on the cross for our sin. But as we study the word of God, that we, we just know that, 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 that we ought to be a certain thing. We ought to be in Christ. And, and we ought to be followers of Christ. And it's not that we are trying to so much live for him, but we are trying to open our lives up. We are to let him live through us. Mm -hmm. And so an evidence of this despising is this willful sin. And the tense verb indicates that Verse 26, it could read, it should read, for if we willingly go on sin. In other words, this, this expectation is not dealing with one particular act of sin, but with an attitude that leads to a repeated disobedience. In other words, we think you just keep on keeping on. We just keep on doing it. It's okay. I, it may be against God's will. It may not be the path God wants for me. But if this is where I'm going to go, I am going. And that is will disobedience. Child knows he's not supposed to get into the cookie jar before dinner. And yet, he goes and gets in the cookie jar. Fully knowing it may be consequences getting in the cookie jar. But it's the cookie they desire. The drive. And he goes for it anyways. If a believer is living in disobedience to the word of God, he or she will soon grow to despise the word of God. Well, what's that? Because Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is quick. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing the sun of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And listen, it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Sometimes I don't even know why I do what I do, but God does because His Word it discerns all the way to the intent. It knows the reason behind what's going on. Right. 
in my life. And so if I am despising the Word of God, if I am willfully disobedient to the Word of God, and I begin to despise the Word of God, I will despise it because it cuts. James said it like this. James said it's like a mirror mm -hmm. that we look into. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you look in a mirror? See a reflection. You see yourself. Warts and all. I mean, I go out in the wind and I'm worried my hair may have got messed up. <laughs> because there was a day where I went out in the wind and I had curly, kicky hair and the wind would blow it and wherever it blew it, that's where it stayed. It was that thing and, and, and you know, I always want that hair to do you this. <laughs> you younger people, they don't know, but that was a generation that, you know, that was a cool thing, man. Guys running around flipping that, you know. I mean, my hair never moved when I flipped my hair. It just sat there like a helmet. And there's days that I, I forget. And then I look in the mirror and I'm reminded. I ain't got to worry about my hair anymore. There's an excuse she didn't like to ride on the back of the nurse like it would this year to give me a helmet hair. I said, you need to get over a helmet hair. Didn't bother me none. Helmet hair. What's that? Well, what's the, the word of God is like that. We look into it and we, and we can't help it. We see ourselves. Mm -hmm. And many times we don't like what we see. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, every beer I walked by, and I'm this is not a joke, it's not I lost my hair. Every beer I walked by, I stopped and looked at it. I was in the, you know, weightlifting, and if I had short sleeve shirts on every beer, I mean, I love full of beer back in the day. Stand for a full of beer. It was in the changing drug trying on clothes, and I was. <laughs>
They didn't go back into slavery, but they never entered into the blessedness of God and what he had for them if they would just cross the Jordan and took Canaan, like God said. We are warned today. We are warned today to despise them because of the possibility of falling into an attitude of despising God and his word. And we're talking to believers. I'm not talking about the world out there that hates God. I'm talking about those who have tasted, who have been enlightened, who have crossed over into salvation, despising the word of God. He is warning us also because there is a judgment. And there's many judgments mentioned in the Bible. We usually think of, of the future judgment, the great white throne, or the being the seat of Christ. But if you look at verses 27, he goes on to say, But a certain fearful looking forward of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour adversaries. Verse 29 goes on to say, Oh, how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy. Who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. Mm -hmm. There is no need. To water down words such as judgment and fiery indignation or sore judgment or punishment. We have already seen from the history of Israel that hardly nobody who was saved out of Egypt by the blood of the Lamb entered into the promise in areas. Nearly all of them. They saw the power of the blood. They saw what God could do as an as a angel came over and passed over because the blood was applied. And yet they never entered into the inheritance that God had for them. Now remember, Canaan is not heaven. It's our journey. It's our walk. Right. It's our blessing in this life as we journey. And so when God says judgment and fiery indignation, that's what he means. Verse 29, the writer is saying, if they were to be judged by death under the old covenant, how much more should judgment come to those who receive the knowledge of the truth? In other words, if they were judged so severely, and Christ hadn't come yet, how much more should we be judged for open rebellion against God? Our judgment is worse. If we are despising, we are we will wander in the wilderness of lost opportunities our whole Christian life. We'll never grow to maturity in Christ. We'll never share our experience of Jesus with others, and there will be loss of rewards. The Bible also mentions there's a sin of the death. 1 John 5, 16, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. There is a sin unto death. There is a line drawn by Almighty God for every Christian. And if we cross that line, I believe that there's a sin that is unto death. And John says, I can't even pray for that person who has crossed that line. It's already too late. Now that doesn't mean that they're dying lost in their sins. It means God is going to remove them from this world. World because they have become a stumbling block unto his kingdom. Amen. And he is not going to allow them to drift any further away into a loss of salvation, but he will take them as to save them as by fire. Some of the Corinthian believers were disciplined and their lives were taken for their presumptuous sin. 1 Corinthians 11 30. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Now, here we use the word sleep, he's talking about many die. God does, no, God does not always take the life of a rebellious believer. 
but he will always deal with him or her. Yep. Verse 30 says, Vengeance belongs unto me. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall judge his people. Verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. The major theme in Hebrews is God has spoken. Mm -hmm. How do we respond? Will you begin to drift? Will you begin to doubt? Will you begin to become dull of hearing? Will you begin to depart from the word of God to the point that now you despise the word of God? Because it's sharp on the man to its sword. Because it digs deep. And it understands the thoughts and the intent of the heart. God has spoken. How are we? Responding to his word. When the nation of Israel refused to obey and believe his word, God chastened them. He let them wander for 40 years in the wilderness. It's important that every Christian obey God and please the Father and all his friends. Dr. William Culperson, he was the late president of the Moody Bible Institute, he used to warn his students about the sad consequence of forgiving sins. The sad consequence of forgiving sins. See, God forgave David's sin. David suffered a sad consequence mm -hmm. for years afterward. Mm -hmm. David despised the command of the Lord, and God dealt with him. 2 Samuel 12, 10 and 11. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of the bride of Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will rise up adversary against you. Every one of David's descendant sons died by the sword. And it even came a point when they went against him. Perhaps when his son tried to mutinate him to become the king. And they went after him and said, David said, if you bring him back, don't, don't harm him. And I believe I'm saying the right one. Remember he had a bunch of hair. Who I am. But what do I do? I mean, it's us nice having talked to the lesson all the morning, so I thought, what do I do? You or I should turn to God for mercy and forgiveness. See, there is no other sacrifice for sin but 
the sacrifice Christ made on the cross. And I want to remind you of something. His sacrifice is sufficient for all sins. It is a fearful thing to fall into the Lord's hands for chastising. But it's a wonderful thing to fall into the Lord's hands for cleansing and restoration. First Chronicles 21, 13. David cries out, let me fall now into the hands of the Lord for very great are his mercies. Mm-hmm. It was a sad consequence of forgiving sin in David's life. And David had fallen into the hands of, of the Lord, but he also realized that there is sweet mercy in the hands of God. Yep. It will just cry out. So we are warned. We are warned because there is a possibility of into an attitude of despising. And we are warned because there is judgment still today. We are warned because we can live a victorious Christian life. The writer begins to bring them to the former days when they endured the afflictions. If we read just a few minutes ago, 32 through the remainder of the chapter, the readers have been willing to suffer reproach and persecution, even to the spoil of their goods. That they had been made in public spectacle. That's what I'm talking about. A gazing stock. Because of the affliction they were going through, because of the things that they were going through, these writers of Hebrew, they were suffering on behalf of Christ. They were, they were great persecution going on as, as the writer begins to write this letter and begins to write and share these warning signs, persecution of, about Christ. They, they thought, well, we killed him, but now we've got all these followers. And they were suffering great for, and they become, you know, they watch them and say, why, why do they believe? Look what's going on in their lives. They become public spectacles, gazing stocks. He tells how God kept them through each trial, and he will preserve them into the future. How many know that to be true in your life? How many know that God keeps you through the trial? The order change says, count it joy. Count it joy when you come into various trials of your life. Because that trial will work patience and endurance in your life. It will begin to work in and through you. If you allow God to work through the trials of your life, you'll come through way better than what you started. Yep. Amen. And that's what he's saying here. He's telling you, remind them, look how God's worked through those trials. Look how he's preserved you. He's got a future for us. He encourages us not to lose confidence in God, for he is faithful. He will keep his promises. 35 and 36, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath greater recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And the best part of it is three little words in the middle. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common a man. But God is faithful. Mm-hmm. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with every temptation, he will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And we sometimes focus on the temptation. We focus on the escape. And those are great things. But right there, smack in the middle, are the three words that we need to focus our attention on as we go through the trials of life, as temptation strikes us, we need to be reminded that God is faithful. God is faithful. Verse 37, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and not tarry. He shares the future promise of Christ returning for us. There's a time on God's calendar that Jesus is coming again, and he will not tarry his coming. Now, I don't split hair over an apple. I don't split hair over someone's Worrying of something sometimes, as long as it's not way off somewhere. But you know, oftentimes I used to remember hearing as a kid in prayers at the end of the service, and someone prayed uh, something about uh, uh, something, and the Lord, unless you tarry your coming. And that phrase was used like, unless you tarry your coming. God is not going to tarry his coming. There is a date on the calendar. Listen, watch closely the signs of the times. Mm hmm. Watch closely what's going on. I shared with the men's group, I think it was the men's group the other, the other Monday morning, we was talking. And I said, you know, unless God pumps his brakes, in fact, unless God puts a stop, Mark's pastor in 
Myself and Mark was talking, and, and, and he actually is the one who, who I heard say that. Maybe for the first time, so where did Pastor Jemison pray? Uh, he, he said, unless God pumps his brakes, unless God stops, he, his phrase was, unless God, God puts a stop to, to what is going on right now. In other words, with, with intellect, with technology, with, with the way that things are advancing, because in the time it says it's going to happen rapidly. Mm-hmm. And, and I just think from 1900 to 2000, how much happened. But just in 20, 2000 to 2020, yeah. look at the progression of things. It's happening, it's going so fast. Mm-hmm. His word was, it must have stopped. And my thought is, it must have at least months to breaks. Slows it down a little bit. It's got to be soon. Mm-hmm. Soon and better soon. We are going to see the King. Amen. It's happening. That's the promise. So how do we endure today? How do we grow and go with God? The secret of victory is found in verse 38. He says, the just shall live by faith. Mm-hmm. That's the secret. That's how we grow. That's how we go with God. Now, the emphasis here is on living. Okay? The just shall live by faith. Living, the just shall live by faith. Can you give sinners on faith? By faith. We're not saved from sin. We're not just saved from sin by faith. We also must live by faith. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Chapter 11, 12, 13, just read it. I mean, living by faith, that's the, that's, the, that's the rest of the book. That's what, he, that's what he's talking about, us living by faith. To live by faith means to obey God's word, to live for Jesus, or better yet, to allow Jesus to live through us. To just open up and have the freedom. Jesus talks about resting from our labors. Man, we're, when we're struggling, we're trying to do all the right things. And stuff. Just, just, just look at here's, here's a man, this is really interesting. I'm working on some things for the men's meeting that I'm doing next week. And, 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 and I got to talk about a lot of do's and don'ts. And I, and I don't want, I don't want us even today to look at these one aside. I don't want us to get caught up in do's and don'ts, okay? So much. I mean, they're there, obviously, they're there, they're in church. But if, we're, if, if all we're doing is every day waking up and trying to not do what we're not supposed to do and do the things we're supposed to do, and we're going to struggle. Yeah. We really are. Jesus said, and John said, if you love me, but the rest, keep my, my commandments. Keep my commandments. How many times do we focus on keeping his commandments more than loving him? You see, the, the result of loving Jesus is obeying Jesus. Right. Now we're not caught up in do's and don'ts. We just want to love him more. How do you show so many love them? I mean, if you love someone, what do you want to do with them? Don't you want to spend time? Debs, uh, I, I told him, uh, I shouldn't mention her name, but Karen and, and, and Kyle, and I, I didn't think Karen's name the other day. She said right across from me, and I said, oh, this, this, this is terrible. It's, I turned 50 just three weeks ago, almost a month ago, but she's just six months ago. Get it, Joe Biden. One month from Tuesday, I turned 60, and in one month, man, it's like I can't remember anything. I don't remember my microphone. Brought the wrong sermon notes over at the beginning. I mean, this has been crazy. You grabbed my phone funeral notes yesterday. Uh, you might want to call me on Sunday morning and tell me it's Sunday, okay? I mean, I need to show up. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, I was talking to the young couple that's going to be married here in another few weeks. Excited about that. Excited to spend a couple hours with them. I said, well, spend an hour. end up being way more than that. But I just couldn't help it. They were just, just a blessing to sit and talk to and share with and, and, uh, and look at. And, and I shared with them love languages. And I'm going to go to all too long before I'm out of time. But there's five of them. And, 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 and just, just to share love language. Deb's primary love language is, 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 is quality time. And quality time is just being together. And young men, our young marriage, I still struggle with it today, 42, 41 years later, almost 41 years later. I still struggle with it sometimes because it's her love language. Just spend time together. And for years, I'd, I'd come home from work and I'd be sitting there and we'd just be sitting there doing nothing. I mean, turn the TV on and not really paying attention to it, you know. And uh, we were young and in love and we sat close, you know, at that time. And, uh, and 
Maybe they're too close to me anymore. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I guess we're not too <laughs> She's close, I just don't realize it. <laughs> but nevertheless, we sit there and I get a phone call. And Phil knows what's about me because he's a whole lot just like me at that time. I get a phone call and it might be Phil busy saying, Hey, Danny, we need an extra player for this basketball game. Can you come? Yeah, I'll be right there doing nothing. Because in my mind, I was doing nothing. Just sitting on the couch. And so, yeah, I'll be there. And uh, and, and so I, I, I sometimes she'd go with me, and sometimes she would not. I'd get back from that basketball game, and I'd go and crawl in the bed, and, and I'd try to snuff up a little close, and, and all of a sudden it'd be. No <laughs> <laughs> words, just body language. <laughs> I get the next morning and I go to the side of the tree and I thought, what, what, and what? What did I do wrong? I mean, I got home and I, and I cooked the dinner, I helped with the dishes. We were just sitting there. I, can't, I, I kept running around. What did I say? Did I say something? Did I, what did I do before I left that made her so upset with me? Did she give me the shoulder roll? And this would happen to time. And I had to take a love test, love on each test, and it came out quality of time. And I realized just, just being there is her love. So I'm not doing anything else. Man, mine is, mine is, uh, is, is, is physical touch and uh, an acts of service. And I love what my dad used to do. My dad would come home from work and he'd help mom. He'd cook, he'd help cook, he'd help clean. I think he'd help down right now. He'd run a sweeper. That was a man's man. Now, he wasn't one of them. He was a man's man. He was tough. He was a, he was a, uh, he was a, a mechanic. But he come home and he was always him doing things. And I said, I wanted to that you share your love. So I did I did the section and I did it. I still I no longer here every Friday. She's retired, that's gonna quit real soon. But but for years I have since Bible college days. I've done no longer. No, I don't want to do but but it's just and so then I learned, you know, she'll let me go to the grocery store with her. It's like that's stupid. <laughs> Give me a list. I'll get it, get it done. <laughs> or just go by yourself. It don't take two. Because <laughs> yeah. I remember I see my grocery shop when we, when we used to go up and down the other route. I said, we don't need anything this hour. What do you want? I'll be glad to go grocery store. Make me a list. I'll go get it. Like, man, my shop is in and out. <laughs> then I discovered that it wasn't really just going to the grocery shop. He was just looking to walk up and down those aisles. We were together. Right. We could talk. It could become quality time. It didn't seem like to me, that's not my thing. I say that to say this. I believe God's own language is quality time. I believe Jesus wants us to spend time with him. And that's how we found this life. It's not getting up and saying, what can I, what should I not do, and what, what, can, what should I do? I mean, that's going to be an, an afterthought of spending time with Jesus every day. If you love someone, you want to spend time. I get ready to go snowmobiling for a couple of days, and, 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 and I, I know immediately, you know, I, I see the frustration in my face. And I don't know why. And I get a little frustrated, and I can't believe all that. All the other people are and, and, and you know, you know, just a couple days from my brother was no well, and, and she used all the little kind of She's like, I'm not crazy, you two are. Amen. You guys get together and you do something stupid. <laughs> Amen. I said, Yeah, I'm only 30. I'm, I'm, I'm 60. He's 50 something. We're, we, it hurts too much to be that stupid. It takes too long to heal. But that was just a cheat she said, I got no reason why I was going to be gone two days. Right. right. And, that, and that's okay. It's okay. It's good that she wants to be with me. That's a good thing. It's tough sometimes. Because sometimes I don't want to go through some kind of thing. But it's But it's okay. God wants us to spend time with him. Now I spent a whole lot of stuff just to tell you that. that you can hold us up in five minutes. It's no fun doing it that way. To be live by faith means to obey God. Obey his word to live through Jesus, to let Jesus live in and through us. We listen, here's what here's what literally happens. We lose our lives for his sake. But then he saves them. That's what he was talking about in Matthew 16, 25. 
For whosoever shall save his life shall lose him. But whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Verse 38 39 talks about those who draw back. It, it, it's a term that means to be, to be taken in. Or, 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 or it's a real term. Here's, here's, the, here's the word picture. If you look at Greek and you, and you do a word picture, it's a, it's a sailboat that drops its sails. To draw back is it's like a sailboat. So, in other words, you're not catching the wind. You're not, you're, not, you're not moving forward. We need to live by faith and let the whole sail out, realizing that Jesus is coming back and we have better things in heaven. And we need to put the sail up and let the Spirit of God move us. We all know people who turn their backs on God. And this and like Israel spent years wandering in the wilderness, wasting. so much, don't go back. It really is more, let's go on. And so our motto should be, not be for us, who can be against us. Amen. Let's go on for God. Father, we love you. Thank you for this time you've given us, for your word, for how precious your word is to us, for the opportunity that you desire for us to spend with you. Because if we love you, we keep your commandments. And the emphasis on the loving you and the result will be obedience in our lives. Help us to spend more and more time with Jesus. Quality time. Not that that will be burdensome. Not that we, we, we endeavor that we're going to get up and read our Bibles and we're going to do this. But that, that it, just, it just flows from the life of obedience and life of love and life that, will, that just lets you, Lord, live through us. I'm not trying to live for you so much as you living for us. I pray for one here today without Christ that this would be the very moment in their life to come to know Jesus. Whatever need is out there for each and one of us, may we allow you to meet that need. May we look to the promise. May we endure this life by faith. Just show me my faith. In Jesus' name. Amen.